can't open it. This is going great. Right, let's talk about this. While I'm painting my nails two weeks ago, I started a challenge, which in the beginning I thought would be easy and fun. Welcome! May is the day. I'm filming a video after five months of not filming anything. So I'm excited, I'm excited. So I came up with the idea that it would be fun if I would do a reading challenge just with witchcraft books. Why not make a challenge to read as many as I can in one day? So I'm gonna give me 12 hours and read as many witchy books as I can and to hopefully get around to read more. I'm excited, I think this could be fun. Spoiler alert, I absolutely failed. I wanted to read five or six witchy books in one day during like 12 hour reading marathon and quickly discovered uh, that I'm absolutely not capable of doing it. I then redesigned the challenge to read one witchy book a day for a week. Then failed that as well. So I redesigned the challenge again wanting to read uh, as many witchy books as I could in one week. Now it's two weeks. This was two weeks ago um, and to this day I managed to read one book. Hey, applause for me, applause for me. One book. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I want to explain to you how it came to this. Share with you this reading blog, uh, or this rather failed reading blog and reading challenge. And talk about why it's so, oh, I painted totally. Why it's so exhausting to read witchy books and why it takes lots of time, at least for me. So, yeah. Let's dive into it. Found it. Ta da! Witchy box, witchy box. Oh, I have so many books. Oh, man. I think the first one will be this one, which is Cauldron. This will be the way to read them. Yeah, I'm excited for this. I'm also a bit scared, but also excited. Okay, let's begin. Tell me you picked the worst day for filming without telling me you picked the worst day for filming. Not sure. Okay, so first of all, this is The Witch's Cauldron by Laura Tempest Zarkov. Um, she has a YouTube channel and I will link it up and below because the videos are amazing. She has a series called Six Minutes of Witchcraft, which I really enjoyed and uh, I hope you will too. So this is one of her books. I also have her books on sigil... I also have her book on sigil magic. The Witch's Cauldron, the craft, lore, and magic of ritual vessels. Uh, it's exactly what it says it is, you know? The funny thing is, I don't even have a cauldron. I needed to read this for a witchy book club I was in, and at the time I read half of it, and then for some reason I dropped it because I don't even know why I did this. This is a, this, this is a good book. In here you can find what is a cauldron, the history of cauldrons, which I, as an archaeologist, always like. 
highly enjoy because uh, in her other book as well she is very scientific and gives lots of historic and scientific evidence for the claims she makes and I love that. She talks about Kunsttrupp, that's how we call it, cauldron, uh, which I learned, I learned about this one in my studies as an archaeologist, so I was like, check this, 10 out of 10. <laughs> I don't know, I just love it. In her other books she does it as well. She also talks about different shapes, sizes, materials, how you can make your own, what to look for when you buy one. Of course, how to use it, how our ancestors used it, how um, you can get creative with it. She gives recipes, she gives um, spells, divination. In the bag, which I also highly enjoy, is a recommended reading and resources where she cites all the scientific papers um, she used in this book as well as other witchy books or articles um, for you to read on what uh, what else to read which is not a not a lot of people do sadly and you should because it's important as a scientist i again 10 out of 10 it was easy to read because it had a very nice flow you could go through i think this is what beginners books should be like because many be books for beginners i read you read the book and you came out of it feeling like you knew nothing more than before like you kind of knew things but you didn't really know things it's hard to explain it just felt like you were as clueless or even more clueless than before and on how to do witchcraft and how to be a witch. This is not the case with this one. So for me, I'm not a beginner, I'm also, but also I don't have a cauldron. And still I found this helpful because the way she describes and goes through her thoughts makes you, just does something to your mindset, how to approach tools or how to approach specific spells. It just, I don't know, I think it's eye-opening how someone can approach witchcraft and the craft in this in this way the author just gives you this feeling that she re not only really cares about her craft but also about the reader as a student but as well as an individual it just she makes you feel welcomed and like you're you're learning valuable lessons that take into account you as an individual and, and your safety and your health another point i really enjoyed was how inclusive she is as well so she also talks about the problems with specific rituals especially when it comes to the cauldron because it's viewed as especially feminine when you look at uh, the Wiccan great right she talks about how we actually can change our views to be more inclusive so the craft is open for lgbtq plus members as well and it's a good thing you know it feels it makes you feel very calm and it makes you feel like there's no like a wall or no requirement you don't have. It's so easy to connect with what she's teaching. It's just, it's a good book. I like it. I give it a 10 out of 10, even though I'm not even owning a cauldron. So that was my tiny review. I hope you liked it. I will link the book down below. So then I read Psychic Witch by Matt Ori, a metaphysical guide to meditation, magic and manifestation. And as you can see, I didn't get far at all. It was so complicated, not complicated, but it was difficult to read for me. And I think that has lots to do with the language barrier because I taught myself English um, that I didn't get very far into this. But the tiny piece I wrote was very fascinating. Um, very intriguing as well so I definitely want to read this but I didn't manage it in this challenge I'm here because I want to finish talking about a witchy challenge I made and or I tried to participate in and uh, failed and I decided it was a good time to finish this video now because I decided to give up on the whole challenge right now I want to explain why so this is the last book I attempted to read and I'm currently at May, chapter 7. 
So I discovered that for some reason I tend to be outside when I read witchy books or when I'm working with the books. And today I went on a hike. My, my goal was to visit this very big, very ancient tree we have here. Today is actually Samhain and tomorrow is a national holiday where I live. Insanely many people are outside at the moment and are out hiking and visited this ancient tree. I sat down and tried to read but it was kind of uncomfortable because so many people came, families and bikers and uh, yeah so I decided to go and find like a more quiet space to not only read but also finish this video because it's been like over two weeks now which was originally supposed to be a one day challenge, a 12 hour challenge so I was like okay you know what let's let's start right here my first misconception was it's slower and harder to read for me because I'm actually taking my time to make notes or mark down information I want to remember or I use like post-its to mark specific pages I think are very interesting. This kind of reading just takes a lot more time because you need to be way more concentrated, way more intuitive, way more observant of the things you're actually reading. So I underestimated that a lot, as well as making notes in my grimoire. So in the reading vlog, I actually shared a part where I sat down and took notes in my working grimoire because that's something I always do when I read witchy books. And it takes a lot of time because I need to filter out what information I want to put down, what information I just want to mark down and how to translate for it into my different grimoires and I don't want to skip this important part for me just because I want to get through this challenge this is not how I want to read my witchy books so I decided to not do that and the result is that I failed the challenge I actually don't know if anybody does, does this um, while reading to make notes after reading or even during reading but I do and it takes me lots of time and effort as well as this weird thing I have where I like to go outside to do my witchy reading, which is not the possibility all the time. I feel like it just gives me like a boost, a mood boost or an, a productivity boost or like, like a connection thing. Uh, like I'm a sim and I have this outdoor personality trait or something. It's just like plus trendy mood and groundness, groundness, grounding yeah you know groundingness <laughs> that's not the word but i hope you know what i mean this challenge failed i managed to read one book and take notes and enjoyed it i really enjoyed this book i managed to start the psychic witch this book here got till may the other two or the other three i didn't even touch so how about that so fazit von diesem video i will not make a reading challenge like this again I discovered that my way of reading witchy books is different than I thought because I never sat down and actually observed myself while I was reading. I also discovered that I actually really enjoy how I do it and I feel really good about it and that I love witchy books and I love reading and I love taking notes and I love learning. So I, it's a success in some way, I guess. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> so. Thank you for joining me for this failed attempt uh, and I hope I see you soon. Bye bye.